All right, Ben Bang, welcome to the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Trade Zero. Dave, do I have Trade a shine Zero. on my head, though? What is this? You look a little, a little shiny. Well, it's because it's, I, I don't think it's, is it me? No, it's the lightning. There's nothing I can do. There's a bright light on my head. See it? I do, yeah. Yeah. A little baby oiled up today. No, it's not a baby oil. It's just, I don't really, it's just the way the lights are hitting me. It's like I have a bright light on me. Are we going to adjust it? Is it because we turned on that? Are you opposed to a bright light well, on Well, I just think having a spotlight on my forehead, and it's on like the Dave Portnoy Show logo. There's something going on here that's different. That's fine. We can try to blast me out. I'm a pro. I'll go through it. Trade zero. Um, I've been using it, and, you know, <laughs> it's ugly. It's red out there. It's red, red in the streets, blood in the streets. We're going around here. Oh. Now I'm dark. Now I'm too dark. Turn it, whatever. I mean, I'm a professional. <laughs> oh, all oh, wait. That's part, they're saying that's part of the logo. That I don't think that's what he's talking about, though. No, I know what he's talking No, about. it's his head. <laughs> yeah, it's a it, is part of, it is part of the logo, but it's, that's not that bright. There's something extra right there. No? That's at the moon? Your head is glistening. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so is the logo. You, that logo is extra bright. No, it's always been like that. The moon has always shown like that. Are we positive? <laughs> it I, looks I extra noticed. bright. What? It does look extra bright. Do we have a clip from last week? Pull it up on Twitter. Trade zero. 24-7 live customer service, multi-platform access, trading from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's huge. Not all platforms. I don't think you can do that on E-Trade. Um, price and commission free, direct market center access, robust inventory for shorting. That's huge. If you want to short, I don't. Scumbag short. Conditional range orders, locate sellbacks. It's big. It's big. If you actually want to trade for real, you got to trade zero initial account minimum, 2,500. Don't just trade, trade zero. I'd really like the stock market to turn around. Do we have a clip from last week? Yeah, look at the thumbnail right here. You see how with you and Dana B? Look at the... Okay, so the logo looks the same. Yeah. Did I have a shine on my head? We can, we can open it. Yeah, there. That's a All pretty right. big shine. Like Whatever, let's go. <laughs> Looking like Derek Fisher today. <laughs> Shiny um, head. Trade zero. Uh, yeah, stock markets, we're just getting pummeled per usual, uh, you know. World, world, what do they call it? Geopolitics? I don't think what's going on in Afghanistan is good for the stock market. What are you going to do? Football. Let's get Thank football you. going. Let's start gambling. Let's get the stock going. Speaking of football, Eddie, I bailed the show out again by placing a late call for a guest. Big guest. One of my all time faves. Short notice. We told him 10 15. He showed up at 10. I guess he's that. If you're not. 15 minutes early, you're 15 minutes late. Greg Olson, without further ado, get him in. Might, he, one, one bad of, news, he left the waiting room. <laughs> no, he didn't. Did <laughs> yeah, he? I, I texted him. All right. He said, be right on. He's a very fast texter, like instantaneous. It's really weird. He he is, um. He, well, I've said it many times. There's very few athletes that I'd consider myself like friends with, like legitimately friends. I'm acquaintances with a lot, but like friends, he's one of them. One of the nicest guys we've met doing it. Like off the top, obviously him, Kevin Hayes. Uh, is that it for pro athletes? I think so. I mean, I, I you, the, the Edelman, Edelman got offended things. when I said he wasn't like, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm acquainted. I'd say hi to him. I talk to him. I would hang up, but I like, I don't, you know, these guys are, are I, they've elevated different levels. No offense to like the Edelmans of the world, who is definitely like a rung below. And I don't mean that negatively. It's just I have very few people that I've become friends with. I don't make friends. Why do you think that is? With Greg? Or no, me just personally? in general. Eh, I'm not prickly. I don't like friends. I like my privacy. I'm a loner. I don't like talking don't to people. Don't you get bored? No. Don't you get bored? You don't no. get bored? Let me tell you about my little friend called TV. But what do you watch, though? I don't like... like I, Ted Lasso. 
How's that? Great. Have you seen it? No, I have great. not. Great. It's great. Um, horse racing, sports, shows will come back. I, you know, I try to pay attention to what we're doing. Got a girlfriend now. Bunch of stuff. <laughs> Wait, you pay attention to what we're doing? Yeah, try to. See what's happening. Yeah. And what is uh, uh, Succession? You watch that too? Best show ever. That's the, well, not, maybe not ever, but that's the best show on television. All right. That's just, that, that's what it is. So the Montauk, that's like the day. You, you, you trade during the day, maybe a couple pods, and then we're just pooling TV. I've actually, on the way yeah, out. no, I've been busy. There's a lot of shit going on. I, I've been very, this summer has, even though I haven't been in the office a ton, this hasn't been the past couple where I've totally disconnected. Although I didn't disconnect last, I haven't had a vacation. Yeah, last summer wasn't either. That was in Nantucket and all hell broke loose. That was like BLM and I was getting canceled and this and that. So that wasn't our, exactly, that's when I kind of went on a rampage against our company. Like I hated everybody. Are you back now? Back what? Like are you, I mean. No, not for good. No. It's August. Yeah, but it's a, it's already week two of preseason. There's only three weeks. I, I'm it's not like, a preseason guy. I, I did see the picture of Belichick like uh, doing the, <laughs> the, the like, you know, the fucking the squats. squats. I loved it. Got yeah. me fired up. But I, I can't. Nothing preseason gets me going. Yeah, but at the same time, there's only three weeks this year. It's a 17 week schedule. Well, I, I, I was going back and forth to the Hamptons from New York's way easier. It's like I jump on a helicopter. I'm there in a half an hour. So I'm here Monday, Tuesday. I have meetings all day today, going to Montauk. And then next week, we really get into the grind. We got uh, Rough and Rowdy and the Jake Paul fight next week. So, and then football starts. So it, it, we're, we're getting it. We're getting into it. And the golf match. Have you been out there? I haven't. I saw Brooks, that fucking, the, what, the, the magic of editing. This guy, this guy, what? I'm going to be intimidated by you, like, putting together this video of a blindfolded 9,000 foot putt. How many takes did that take? Or did you just edit? I don't care. I can, if I go out, by the way, I can hit a righty putt. What does that mean? I can hit a righty putt. No problem. It's a far putt. Big deal. How many takes you think? You think he just walked up blindfold, hit that putt first time? No chance. Probably not. No. Not probably not. Definitely not. You got Hank Lockwood, that rat. <laughs> That rat in the comments being like, I love my guy, but he's going to get killed. Shut up, Hank. I took you to the fucking moon. Do you talk to Hank Bunch anymore? If I see him, I like Hank, but he's a rat. I like Hank. Hank's an all-time <laughs> Milton guy, you know? I didn't know he was going <laughs> Benedict Arnold on us. Yeah, he in the comments section. <laughs> that's an all-time. I like him, but he's a rat. That's, that's, that's not I mean, he's been a rat that. since I met the time that he tried to say he went to a bank and they didn't have a $2 bill. <laughs> they were out of two dollar bills that day. Yeah, I called them on that. And he was ripping you in the comment section. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, any update, Kareem? Uh, yeah, he's coming at ten fifteen now. Five By the minutes. way, okay. other uh, other athletes that I would say are in your like friend group, and um, my guess, Matt Walsh, NBA player. Yeah, you consider that he's not. Matt Walsh wasn't in the NBA. <laughs> Matt Walsh was certainly in the NBA. Played for the Heat. Florida Gators to the Miami Heat. Matt Walsh was in the NBA. Yep. You know who we I saw mean, I, at? Um, oh, you were there. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah Donnie Marshall. Do, Donnie Marshall from, from the TBT. TBT days. Yeah. Oh. We saw him at uh, Surf Lodge. Surf Lodge the other day. Obliterated. Oh yeah, he was fucked up. Uh, and what Ryan, did he say? and I would say Ryan Whitney's a friend before work. Yeah, Ryan Whitney, a hundred percent. Yep. That's a good call. How'd you, but uh, I didn't know him when he was in the league, I don't think. Right? Just through, like, Twitter? Retired. No, he was already done when I, we met, yeah. I thought. <laughs> he, he was out early, so. It's the first time I ever mentioned him when, like, Feidelberg was like, why don't you get Ryan Whitney to do the goalie challenge? I was like, I need, like, actual guys in the league, not, like, shitbags. That was JVR. Yeah, the JVR yeah. shootout. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how was the weekend, Toga? Fun. It was a long week, you know. <clears throat> My parents came up to Montauk for the first time, spent the day with them there uh, a couple nights, and then we flew to Saratoga, spent a couple nights there. Uh, you know, it was good to see my parents, but 
they're getting a little bit up there. My dad, you know, he's getting prickly, my dad. And, and, and we had to have a conversation, Eddie, about Barstool. Because he's really... <laughs> All right. I took a picture. We were at an Italian restaurant. I don't, this is a wavy, gravy, Davy Portnoy show. But we were at a restaurant, and it was just an Italian restaurant. And they had, like, lobster taglinetti or something on the menu. And he's like, oh, this is... This is what I got confused by. I'm like, huh? He thought it was just in the middle of an Italian restaurant, pasta dishes, lobster taglatelli, I believe. He thought that was a lobster. He's like, this is the pasta. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is just a lobster pasta. It's going to be lobster with pasta. And I was going to take a picture and make fun of him. He got very mad. He is Nate. I told him. I. He only wants to be in content if people are laughing with him. If there's anything at his expense or people are laughing at him for the wrong reasons, he gets really mad. It's crazy. I'm like, you can't, I, it's like, I, it's what I say to Nate. You, it, if you're going to be in content, you got to, you can't control the narrative. He was very upset about that lobster claw mishap. Was he? Yes. Like he didn't I, think it was funny at all that he, he was that dumb. So it's like, I got to be careful. him. he's getting up there on age. Can't hear anymore. I mean, you know, like we sat at the one day, the track was so hot at the track for a couple days. Like I almost had heat stroke with Elio. I almost had, I was putting ice cubes down my shirt. It was that hot. Um, but, you know, he's like, I'm not having a good time. My glasses are dirty. So we'll clean them. Well, so what it, was he like, uh, like, was it a heated dinner? No, but it's just. It's kind of always what a little bit he, he's I'm going to be more. I'm going to be nicer. I've decided to be nicer. Wow. Yeah. Because like me, That's, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Make fun, whatever. It's like he, he has a lot of Nate in him. That's that's groundbreaking because a lot of people think you're too mean to him. You know that. Yeah. Well, they haven't lived 44 years with him, so. So that's that's groundbreaking. So you're not you're you're like they're, they're not going to be joking around with him as much. No, sure I will. No, like no. But either. for content, I don't care off the off. It's like, you know, I was surprised he got mad that I was going to tweet that picture be, mm -hmm. and make fun of the lobster thing. Like, but he was. But you always have said he didn't like, the you know, the Morty Seifeld comparison. He, he, he doesn't. Like right. Larry. He doesn't. He doesn't buy into that at all, even though it's dead ass true. Yeah. Well. As long as, you know, he we got to get him involved in some way, you know, some type of new thing. Because I think he needs it, though. Yeah, he loves it. And I, yeah. Loves being recognized, loves all of it. He loves it. Mm -hmm. So some some type of where he could just talk to people and this is get his thoughts radio. out there. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it's 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 a uh, your dad comes on the show a lot. So it's relevant. It's true. It's very relevant. And then you so you come you came up up or down this weekend. So with my parents, I was red ass hot. I was very hot. Um, hit a couple of monsters, like a twenty five grand winner, a twenty grand winner. When you're betting a thousand two a race, that's huge. Then the first day, Elio showed up, and he knew it. Credit to Elio. He saw how hot I was. He's like, "This sucks," because he's about to show up, and we do our partner thing. The first day, I was zero for ten with Elio, um, and then the second day, we both did decent. We both hit like three races the second day, which is again a lot, but. I was betting a lot more later in the day, so I lost, but I still had money in my pocket when I came home, which is sort of a win. How was I think, I'm done. Was I think I'm done with Saratoga for the season. Travers, I have a horse cross-border that I own 25% off with three Diamond Farms, Wyckoff, Kurt Wyckoff, Jordan Wyckoff, um, running in the Sword Dancer, which is the race before the Travers. It's a million-dollar race, cross-border. I don't know what his odds will be, but he's, he'll be one of the favorites. Um, but I don't think I can go because we're going to be Friday, West Virginia, rough and rowdy and Sunday, Cleveland. Maybe I could fly in, but I don't think I'm gonna. Yeah. That's a big weekend. Yeah. But imagine uh, winning a million dollar race at Saratoga and not being there for it. That'd be horrible. That's your, that's your time in the winter circle. Yeah. What do you think it'll be like a four to one? Yeah, probably in that range, maybe four five, six to one, maybe. I mean, yeah. he, he won the prep into it, and he won it easily, and he loves Saratoga. Cross-border loves Saratoga. Like, loves it. 
I went to a golf outing this past weekend with with old Blackhawks coach, Coach Quenville. Yeah, I saw that. And he was he was a a, a big cross border guy. Really? Yeah, he's he goes all the time. Him and his buddy Kevin Deneen live up there. He's an old Blackhawks coach too. Did he know? Did, like, were you like Dave, what, my guy Barstool, like is a part owner of that horse? Yeah, he's like, oh, he's like, that's a very good horse. He's like, that's one of the best. Like you're going. So he, he, he's a big he's, um, guy. He's a monster on mm-hmm. Saratoga, and if he wins that, he'll go. He'll probably go to Breeders' Cup, which is amazing. Yeah. And no, meanwhile, that, that that more on White Sox Dave keeps calling Elio to challenge cross border to like match races. His horse can't win at Presque Isle. Like, how are you gonna be cross border? I know he's he, he's big on that match race. Well, like, why huh. would we do that? Like, we're we're trying to win a million dollar race, not a not a ten thousand dollar qualifier at Presque Isle uh, with White Sox Dave running versus fucking Carl. I don't think he's a details guy. I think he's, he's just not like a details a, guy. You, you got you got a horse. I got a horse. Let's do it. There he is. Uh, oh, there he is. Look at this setup. What's up? What's going on? How we doing? So what, did you just join early to test and then jumped? No, I, I thought it was 10. <laughs> oh, got it, got it. All right. Um, so I was you, like, where is everybody? And then I checked my phone and it said 10, 15. Did, I gave you a glorious intro that I think I've given before. I didn't hear it, but I'll assume it was great. It was. I, I was saying, um, I think you've heard it before. It, for, from doing Barstool... It's almost 20 years now, uh, like a handful, very few athletes that I feel like I can say, no, I'm like legitimately friends with. You're in the short, you, um, Kevin Hayes, hockey player, and and Ryan Wood. And you're really the only one that's not from like Massachusetts now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. You're from Jersey, right? Jersey. So thanks for coming on short notice. What, uh, what's up with you? Like, I know we talked before, so you're, you're a broadcast now, you're a suit. I'm a suit, as you would say. Yeah, I'm getting ready to uh, – I'll start the weekend after Labor Day when the NFL opens. I'll work with Fox and call games. And between between that, I coach 5,000 youth sporting events all over Charlotte, and I'm known as, like, the crazy coach, crazy dad who just, like, yells at a bunch of little kids as we try to win tournaments. That's pretty much my life right now. Wait, so baseball? We do a lot of baseball. And then in the fall, we'll do, a, we'll do some flag football. It's just not quite as intense. But we do a ton. We do a ton of baseball. We uh, during the spring and the summer, we travel all over the country and play as many big tournaments as we can find. And we take it pretty serious. It's awesome. What um, who, who's your partner for Fox? Kevin Burkhart. So he's actually a guy. It's funny. So Kevin Burkhart has been the number two guy at Fox for a long time. He actually went to college in my hometown. So when I went out and did my audition, I had known Kevin since I was in high school. He worked for like the local radio station, fresh out of college, like learning his skill or whatever. And um, he used to call my high school games and come over to our school and hang out. So when I did about five, six years ago, when I did my audition game out in Fox, um, he just happened to be my like, you know, play by play guy for the audition. And uh, we kind of reconnected and, you know, kind of kept in touch and whatever. And now they paired us up together all these years later. So what game are you? Like so we're, the, the, we're the number two game. So like we're the game behind, we're like the crew behind Aikman and Buck. Got it. I'm always curious with a guy like you to, who to like my outside perspective made more money than you're ever going to be able to basically spend or man, not spend, but plenty of money. So what it's a lot. Well, you have like, what's your career earnings? Do you know? I've done not quite as good as you, but I've done great. So, okay. You probably have it. I, I still got to get, but what it's a lot of travel. It's yeah. a decent amount of work. I'd assume like prepping and doing all that. So what's the motivation for you to get into broadcasting? Is it just to stay busy, continue to make money? You just want to stay around football. Like, what is it? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of everything. How much? I think 70 mil. Thank you. Um, you know, I, you know, to be honest, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think when I was looking, you know, years back when these opportunities presented itself, you know, back in 17, Fox gave me the opportunity on my bye week to call a game, um, with Kevin and Charles Davis at the time we did a three man booth. And I just kind of really, I really enjoyed it. I liked being at the stadium. I liked being up in the booth. I like talking ball and preparing. It's kind of the next closest thing. I don't want to coach. I, I have zero earnings to, to coach and do all that time. This was like the next step. You know, this kept me involved with the game. It kept me engaged with everybody. But it also, I'm only going to be gone a night, maybe two nights a week just for the fall. So it was like a good balance for me. You know, I, I get to still be around for from January to September. 
I'm around, I'm home, I'm a dad, I'm coaching my kids stuff. We're able to travel, do what I want to do. And then in the fall, which has kind of been my life for 30 years anyway, I'm busy on the weekends and during the week, I can still kind of do my own thing. So I'm, I'm excited about it. It's something I've really enjoyed doing. Um, the more I've done it, the more I've liked it. Kevin's awesome. The Fox crew that I've got is awesome. And uh, I'm going to give it a shot and see how it goes. So I know we were talking back a little bit before and you decide next moves. You had the Fox. Did you any, ever do anything with like the podcast stuff? We're still kicking around the podcast stuff. We have a few ideas that we think are, are pretty interesting. Um, you know, we, we haven't, do, we haven't really done anything. I did my, you know, kind of my short form podcast series last year, that TE one um, right around this time last year when it came out and it did really well. And we had kind of conversations to keep it going, but I kind of wanted to get out of just being like pigeonholed into just talking about tight ends all the time and football all the time. So we're kicking around a few ideas that we had that we think are pretty interesting that people are, that people seem to really have interest in. And, uh, but as of now, we haven't done anything yet. No. Eddie, did you know that like before you sat in that seat, like Greg and I were talking about like doing something like this, it was going to be Greg and Dave instead of Eddie and Dave. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you happened, told me whatever, that. Whatever. whatever happened, oh, you get busy at going doing all your things. No, it's like bullshit. I can't. Yeah, it's not bullshit. bullshit. It's in what? Was, all right. You want to talk about bullshit? Like... What? What? What happened to this idea that I'm like, yeah, tell me how to get going. He pitched me, let's fucking do a documentary on Seven Floor Crew. I'll get all the guys. We'll interview them. I'm like, tell I, me how to do I, it. What happened? You went crickets. No, I haven't done it yet, but I think. I think that would be awesome. Of course it would be awesome. We were begging you to do that for almost two you decades. Never... Uh, you, you you, literally, if we even mentioned it, you, you with... you, if we mentioned it, you'd be like, oh, I'm up for to, to lose man of the year for the eighth straight year. I can't I can't talk about seven floor crew. <laughs> That's your favorite thing is that I'm the all time biggest man of the year loser. <laughs> it, it was a fact. It's a fact. Uh, you know, they changed. You know, they the NFL changed the rule because of me. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, I know. It was uh, quite the experience, but, but nonetheless, the seventh floor crew, you, you, for the duration of as long as I've known you up till you out of the blue being like, this is a good idea. I thought I, was I thought you got hijacked. I told Big Cap, like, you'll never believe what Greg said. One is like, what do you mean? He, no. he refuses to talk about it. No, here, here's the thought behind it. It's been portrayed a certain way. It came out the way it did kind of randomly. It was kind of stolen off of a computer during the whole like file sharing back during college days and whatnot. And we never really were given a chance to ever comment on it. You know, in Miami, we didn't talk about it. Then I got drafted to Chicago. It was on the back page of the sun times. It was super embarrassing. It was from five years earlier and it just kind of resurfaced after I got drafted in Chicago. Again, I didn't really want to get into it. I was starting my career. Like it was something that I was trying to like move past the backstory, right? Not the content and the lyrics. Like we all recognize that was absurd. I mean, but it's college kids. It was college kids. But the part that I look back on now as a 36 year old father of three who married my college girlfriend, like the part that I think is interesting is like the background of how that thing even came to be. Like that's the part, the guys in the dorms and we were all roommates and buddies and it was never meant to be public. And it was kind of like a off the cuff on a whim made for 10 people in a room that like the lyrics are pretty strong to be off a whim, <laughs> Greg. It looks like, I mean, it looks like you had fucking Jay Z writing some of those lyrics. So I don't know how whimsical it, well, like you just sit down into the future. You're going to have to tune into the future uh, behind the scenes story to get all that detail. So I'm in like, but you, you're the one who has to get like, we can't get in touch with these. You get these people. We'll okay. do it. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it offline on how to do it. I, I just think if we do it the right way, like everyone recognizes the lyrics were bad. And in what? today's world, we probably would have been kicked out of school. I don't think any of us. Well, from that. they're bad for what? Like that, like if that, the, if you listen to like a rap song, they're not really yeah, bad for like a rap song. Is it bad for like how strict everybody? I mean, they're just, yeah. they're bad that they went public i guess and people get worked up but like it's college kids being college kids yeah it was it was a, the epitome of stupidity in college but i think the the story there that's still left to be told is like the friendships on the team and the guys that lived amongst each other and the football players were all in the dorms and how the whole thing kind of be where was the studio like how the hell did we all of a sudden find ourselves in a dorm room recording on like professional equipment like there's a story behind it that I think is the part, right? Like everyone's heard the song, everyone's heard the controversy, fine. But like, 
the story about the people behind it is the part I think is fairly interesting. Yeah. Well. I, it's been Do the you dr- still that, get it that often? What's that? Do you still get it that often? Or what's like the percentage, like seventh floor crew, like when you're walking? Well, third leg Greg down. is like one of the great nicknames yeah. of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> some of my buddies think the best thing is like anytime I post like a picture of like my daughter on Instagram, like something innocent on her birthday or something. They send me like screenshots of the comments and it's like, happy birthday, you know, Talbot. Third, but then like the next 20 comments are like all about, so I'm like, can people just move on? But people can't, people cannot move on. They, it's never going to die. Yeah. Well, it's something about the song, the school, which at the time was still like, you know, it was yeah. still Miami. So a bunch yeah. of different factors there. Um, For sure. Before we it's go on. It's a good on, song too. It's, it's a, a great good song. song. Like it, it like it like has flow and everything. It's really. That's good. why he's saying it's whimsical. And then he's like, "We just we fell out, and then all of a sudden we had professional equipment and like these lyrics." So I don't know again how whimsical it was. We'll have we'll have to fill in the blanks if that's, you ever make. I'm, listen, we started that documentary series, and that was like the first one we wanted. But you, up till very recently, refused to even. You, you've like, hey, that song Third Leg Greg. You're like, who's that? I, I not involved. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go, gotta go lose man of the year. Um, more importantly, how's your son doing? He's doing awesome. He, uh, he's doing really good. Quite the transition. Um, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> he's, he's doing awesome. He's about, he's almost nine. He's about nine, a little over nine weeks, uh, post transplant. He's been through hell, but he's doing great. He's running around Saturday. He was able to go do a little baseball practice outside with, with his baseball team and, get back into it. He's, if you saw him, it, it, you'd be amazed. He, he looks like he didn't go through anything. He's going to start school tomorrow. The doctors gave him the all clear to start school tomorrow. So uh, the first like 12 weeks is the big window. So we're almost at 10 and, um, but he's doing, he's doing awesome. That's great to hear. So yeah. this is the first season continuing with transitions going to the booth first. Do you miss not playing right now is there any part of you that's like oh man i wish i I stayed around for another year it depends what part i see like the other night i was watching one of the i wanted to tune in i wanted to see trevor lawrence play so i was watching the jaguars game and i saw like one of their young tight ends catch a ball and the safety just came up and just like blew out his kneecap he just like flipped him upside down and took and i literally said to my wife sitting on the couch i was like i'm so glad i'm not doing that anymore like it just looked miserable i the fact that i did it that i was like what was i thinking but then like you see the guys after the game and like talk to them and they're in the locker room and the flight home and like all that's the shit that that's the part you miss, right? You don't right. miss 8 a.m. 150 degree training cramp practice. You don't miss getting your leg blown off. You don't miss any of that. But like you miss the guys, you miss the locker room, a big game, a great game, a big catch. Like you miss the camaraderie and the, you know, it's, it's all I've ever done in my whole life. So I'm sure on game day, it'll feel a little weird, but I don't miss the grind. I don't miss waking up in the morning and worrying about, I got what I eat and what my workout time is. And like just my whole day living in my brain, because I can't do anything until I get my work done. Like that obsessive everyday routine is exhausting. And uh, like to be able to enjoy this off season without having to stress about that was awesome. Got it. Any thoughts on uh, this season? Like if you were predictions, who you surprises, anything like that? Like, I think the Patriots are going to be great. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Patriots fan, but I think Bella, this is like if we're looking at it at, in a Star Wars, like this is going to be like uh, the Empire Strikes Back. Like, I think he has so much to prove, and they spent a bunch of money. I don't know what they're going to do exactly at quarterback, but I think the Patriots will be one of the surprise teams of the year. I, I, I actually don't disagree with you. I, I thought last year they didn't really have much of a shot. I think when all those guys opted out. Right. And then Cam started out hot, and then he got COVID, and then they never really found their groove after that. I think with the couple guys they have coming back who had opted out, plus, like you said, the bazillions of dollars they spent in free agency, which was very non-Patriots in the past, um, I think they got a shot. I think, you know, obviously it comes down to I, – I hope Cam has a great year. You guys know how I feel about Cam. Like, obviously I'm loyal probably to a fault at times. Like, he's my guy. Were you I'll ever like, him. dude, throw the football? Like you're holding it, like last year, like watching him play last year. When you played with him, go back in the huddle, just elbow and be like, "Yo, you may want to throw the ball a little quicker." You're just holding it forever. Yeah, (laughs) you know his style was what it was. I I, it was very hard for me to complain because when we were playing together, he threw me the ball probably more than he threw the ball at anybody. So like there wasn't a lot of you're one of those selfish guys. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was the selfish guy. It was like, you know, <laughs> he throws it to me. Everything's fine. <laughs> but no, I, you know, I think if Cam, if Cam can just get back and just play solid ball for them and do – I mean, listen, if he can bottle what he did those first couple games last year, yeah. it, I mean, he was unbelievable. Um, you know, and then he got COVID and never seemed like he ever really found his groove and got back. A big part of that was he didn't have a great crew around him, right? Like he didn't have – a great crew of weapons. They had some of the backs that they kind of used creatively and whatnot, but it wasn't really Cam's deal. I think if he can stay healthy from all sounds, it sounds like he's had a solid training camp. I don't know much about Mac Jones, so it's hard for me to really yep. talk much about him based. I only saw him play in college, but that only goes so far. I think they got a shot. They'll play better defense this year and they got some more weapons on offense. So that's a start. What do you think of Eddie's Keep bears? I, it's actually, I actually have the bears. I have the bears week three. Um, in Cleveland, which is actually a game that I'm pretty excited about. Cause I mean, listen, the storyline there is, are they going to start Justin Fields game one or not? Right. And when they signed when, so I actually was with Andy Dalton. We, we just ran into him in Mexico on vacation, like back before free agency. And I was, we were talking at, you know, sitting at the pool and we were talking, he's a great guy. I've known him for a few years. And he had mentioned Chicago as a potential destination. This was before he signed there. And I was pumping up Chicago. I was like, dude, go there. You're going to love the city, you know, all this. And then he signed there. And I was like, that's a perfect guy to kind of steady the ship and whatnot. But when you draft a guy like Justin Fields, I mean, we saw a glimpse of it. Granted, it was the preseason. The dude is special. I almost feel like at some point you're delaying the inevitable, right? He's going to play at some point. You might Are you well going to be start. one of those guys, Greg, that everyone's great? You don't think Justin Fields is good? Special? No, I don't think it's special. And, 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 I mean, Dal yeah, and Andy Dalton's the perfect guy to steady the ship. What? I do. I what? think that team, if Andy they can Dalton? play, right, compared to what they are had. Are you going to criticize anybody, or are you going to be one of those guys just, you're just going to, you're going <laughs> to love everybody up. Doesn't matter who it is, because you know him, you're in the no. league, this guy's special. I'm going to tell you, as a I would, fan, Andy I'm going to give you advice. I don't know, hey, listen, I don't know. I'm going to give you advice. Don't, I'm going to count how many specials you say during your telecast, and how many guys you're like, oh, this guy's one of the best. And it, you're going to, I got to feel like, announcers do that. And if everybody's special and everybody's the best, then nobody's the best and nobody's special. No. Feel free to I, criticize. There's your what, first free advice. I, I appreciate the advice. Andy when Dalton's they, the perfect had, guy for Chicago. They, compared to who they had, who are they going to start? I mean, the, oh, that's not an improvement. Like, Eddie, what did Chicago fans do when Andy Dalton was put out on the Instagram as QB1? They had a heart attack. Yeah, everybody freaked out. But, I mean, Greg, like, you Greg, know how Greg's it is like, oh, like this that. guy's special. Yeah. Andy Dalton. He's I 70, never said he was special. 72 years. Yeah, but you were leaning I there. said Justin Fields is special. It, is, the, is the Clemson kid special? Trevor Lawrence? Yeah. Hell yeah. All I right. Think, is, is the Jets quarterback? Is, is no, the kid from I don't know. BYU I, I, special? I don't, I don't think I think the jury's still out on him. No, I, I wouldn't cling my hopes. If I was the Bears, I don't know if on day one I'm throwing him out there. I'd probably go with Andy. You you know how our hearts are though, Greg. Like you can't you say it's possible for Justin Fields, like you know our hearts gonna, are like, I already know Greg to Greg is gonna we're gonna have seventeen no, you, all pro guys, Hall of Famers in every that's game. That's not true. I'm, I'm gonna call it like it is. I'm gonna I keep think a based pen, on I'm gonna keep a pen please. and a pad. I am gonna track I'm gonna chart your your calls. To see, yeah, do it. Yeah, That'd how be about great this? Ratings. It'll be great ratings for us. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Tebow just got cut. I saw that. You're late. Yeah. Come on. Well, I mean, what do you they think? Is he, here's your opportunity. Did he to go to like tight that. end school with you? He did not. He did not go to tight end school with us. If he did, he probably would have made it. So what was that all about? The t the tight the T E tight end school. Are we not going to finish the Justin Fields conversation? What do you want to say? Spent the time will tell. I don't think he's special. What makes you think he's special? He looked I like think... fucking dirt in that last game that Ohio State lost. Okay. We'll find out. Yeah, we will. What, what's he... your definition of special? I think he's a top-tier 10, 15-year NFL quarterback where every year there's no controversy. Okay. There's no who's the quarterback. You go into training camp every single year, we have our quarterback. Uh, is he – going to win seven Super Bowls and be Tom Brady is he going to be Patrick Mahomes who would you take uh Trevor Lawrence or Fields Trevor Lawrence okay so super, I think that super I think special, that class I think that class had two top tier guys that you would take at the top of the list I think the Jets kid is the best he very well may end up being I'm just saying based on what I've seen yeah. in what he did in college and where he goes 
I wouldn't be shocked if that kid turned out to be a great player. The problem is the Jets have yet to prove that they can support a quarterback to allow that. But the Bears have? I think the Bears have a better team than the Jets. Uh... If I'm one of those two quarterbacks and I got to pick in the first round, do I want to go play for the Bears today or do I want to go play for the Jets? I'm going to go play for the Bears all day. No, I, I disagree. I think no, we got better skill positions for sure. I, I, your, your coach, you got, your coach sucks. I like the guy they got now in New York, and now I may be biased, but I like the GM in in New York too. There you go. I, the, the assistant GM in New York is one of my best buddies. I talked to him on the phone. The oh other yeah, day. well the main GM is my, one of my good buddies. So fuck you. Good. We'll take take a fucking hike. But my point is, I'm not saying they're not. I'm not saying they can't get better. As we sit here today, if you were going to ask those kids which team would they rather be drafted to. I'm sure Justin Fields was doing backflips. You, but Nagy sucks. Fair. That's fair. They're a better team right now. And again, I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl. I'm just saying they're better than the Jets. Well, maybe this year. If I was a quarterback, I would still – I think the Jets have a better future than the Bears. And we'll see with the quarter. A lot will depend on how good those two guys are, clearly. Yeah, no question. No doubt. I'm fired up now. Well, especially. You seem, you seem fired up. That's great. Do, I mean, do you I, not, I mean, are you not excited Justin Fields is on your team? I am, but, like, I'm, I'm just always, like, I'm always nervous. You know what I mean? Like, you know how it is. Here, well, you're a Bears you know, fan, right? Bears fans are just they, – they prime themselves to be disappointed at quarterback. That's exactly. kind of – you guys set yourselves up, but you never really allow yourselves to ever embrace anybody. I know, and it's a problem. I, I, I feel like they should, they're very excited about Fields. I hope so. They, you guys should be doing – I was there when we traded for Cutler – I don't think the city embraced Cutler. I think they held the NFC Championship game against them. They thought like he wasn't hurt when he really was hurt. I think if that game never happens, Cutler's entire time in Chicago is completely different. The city just for whatever reason lost their shit. And that dude was good. Cutler was fucking good. That year, you guys, it was the year after, it was 2012. I had gotten traded the year before. So 2012, give or take 11 or 12. And you guys were rolling. He dives and tries to make that tackle and broke his thumb. If he, you, you guys were one of the best teams in the league. He was yeah. killing it with Brandon Marshall and all, Matt Forte. Like Cutler played good ball there, but once he got on everyone's bad side, everyone just gave up on. Him. Yeah, the sideline shit. Like I don't know. People looked way too far into that. Who cares? Was, yeah. So I he mean, gave. He rolled his eyes at the coordinator. Who gives a shit? Yeah, no, I I got you. I, it's not that I haven't embraced Fields. I'm super fired up for him. But it's like it's, it's like Dave said too. After the double doink, the last two seasons, it's just been downhill and downhill. It's just the, the shit around him and like the head coach and then Ryan Pace, some of the moves he's made. It's just been hard to get excited as far as that goes. But I can't hold them against him. So that's where I'm. What what number pick you know? was he? Ten. You guys you guys traded up right? Ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was top ten. Yeah. So Lawrence is one, and, and the Jets kid uh, was two, right? Was Two, yeah, two or three. Yeah, yeah. yeah eleven. No. Excuse me. 11. I I love I love the BYU kid. Like yeah. I love him. Love him. Yeah, so I we'll like see, his We'll see who knows like football. You know, I know I know state. you're one of those guys that when, when I back you into a corner in an argument, you're like, well, I played the game, which is like an unfair thing. <laughs> but that's your default whenever I. I never said that to you. Oh, you when I verbally put a beat down on you, verbally, mentally, you go there. Well, I played Seahawks Super Bowl. Right. And Seahawks the, Super Bowl. I said the Seahawks red zone defense was going to be a key. And on the first series, they picked the ball off in the red zone and everyone shit on you. Yeah, well, they, the Patriots won that game. No, I know. I'm just saying that that played right into my point. First right. series, right on time. Seahawks got a pick. All right, Black Rifle Coffee. I'm drinking it. Black Rifle Coffee Company, veteran-owned coffee company serving premium coffee to people who love America. Veteran CEO, founder Evan Haffer, spent seven years on the ground overseas with U.S. Special Forces as a CIA contractor. Uh, we, they import high quality coffee beans from all over the world, roast five days a week facilities in Manchester, Tennessee, Salt Lake city, Utah team at black rifle coffee can nearly research and experiment with new roasting methods and coffee origins. Go to black rifle coffee.com slash Dave use code Dave today, get the freshest coffee in America shipped to you. Uh, you can also, all right, let's get back to, I was going to uh, say, you join the coffee or club too, if you wanted Eddie. Oh, so a coffee club. Really? Yeah, pick your perfect roast, how much, when you want delivered delivery door, and they'll take care of the rest. Free to sign up. You get free shipping, discounts on partner brands, early access, new products. Again, blackrifle.com slash Dave. I love their logo. Support the troops. Yeah, my apologies. Go join the coffee club. No problem. All right, let's get back to Greg. So who's your I'm pick? Gonna, I want to finish, finish the last point. We'll move on. 
the problem with the Bears, which is why, you know, again, if Fields can go in there and just be, again, the, the baseline of what he has to do to just get that team back to where they were a few years ago is not a huge endeavor, right? They, the problem is their style of play as a team, the margin for error was, if they didn't have 10 turnovers a game on defense, they didn't have a prayer. The year yep. that they went, the year, their best year, Nagy's first year, their offense was average at best, below average probably. Mm -hmm. But they fucking led the league in interceptions. They led the league in turnovers, uh, takeaways. They led the league in defensive points scored. Like, that's just not something that's sustainable. You need to play offense. And hopefully mm -hmm. they got their guy that can do it for a long time. And if he can do it and not pay him anything because he makes no money and they can spend all their money on their defensive guys, they got a shot. I, I Watching him in college, I just never got the vibe. He was like a good pocket passer. He's like, a, to me, a runner who and that those guys generally don't translate in, in the NFL to me. We'll see. I'm we'll also going to keep a track on you, Greg. I am going to track your games. How many dumb cliches you say? Like what? Like turn the team that wins a turnover battle is in good shape today. Are you referring to what I just said about no, the Bears a few no, no, years no. ago? No, no, no. No, I, I, no. Okay. I don't know what how you're going to be. I don't want you to be cliche guy. I'm even willing to coach you up after – like the broadcast, be like, ah, you, you said, you know, the, the the key to the game is who controls the line of scrimmage ten times. Like, no, I, I don't do that. Okay, we'll see. That's not my. That's not my thing. That's not your bag. We'll see. We should have what a was, game uh, within the game. What Maybe was your podcast going to be about? Who he and I? Yeah, because I remember when I when I called you last summer to pitch oh, this gonna, one. You're like, yeah, like gonna be, Greg and I might do. It something was going to be kind of like everything. Yeah, we're just going to talk world about events, world. sports, everything. We're gonna kill it. I don't really know why. I mean, you, you, you're you're consistently we're in flux. I mean, you had the Fox thing like lined up. I don't even know if you knew you weren't playing yet when we were talking. Like you you were figuring out your future still. And then Eddie, we, we just we first started. talked about the podcast together years ago. Right. Correct. Well, well before I was done playing, I I texted you about it maybe in the last year. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about it a little. And it's always, too, if you're doing, you know, we, we sling it. So Greg can, but if you're doing it. You what time did you text me yesterday? What? You're just saying you sling it. What time, you texted me yesterday, and I was on in, like, 10 hours. No, I don't mean that. I meant, like, if you were still playing the Fox. Oh, yeah. You, it's yeah. it's more. Playing, you, playing. Playing Correct. was going to be – it was impossible for me to do it while we were playing. Right, and there is no great podcast anywhere that I'm aware of with active players because you got to watch what you say for the most part, you know. Yeah, it, it, playing was impossible. I did the only, I did that short-form thing on, like, the, the history of the tight ends. A, because it was a cool storyline, but B, we got some unbelievable – like, we're interviewing Mike Ditka on, like, 1965. And it was just, like, a really cool, like – genre to kind of cover from my perspective so like that was a short form thing and we did like seven episodes but it, it was launched in the summer like before the season started so there was no heavy lifting during the year to be a current player and carry a real pod that you're going to do like legit routinely every other day every day whatever it is is virtually impossible if you're still going to try to be a decent football player so what it, what it we we got to it the tight end the school i saw you guys giving the speeches oh um, yeah yeah you oh you like he was there. You like Kelsey, huh? Is Kelsey, yeah. Kelsey and Kittle. So, so what happened was, so when I I don't I, like I, Kelsey, I like Kittle. Uh, they're good. Kelsey's a great dude. I've never met I'm, him, but oh, he's yeah. he seems like I, the all time look at me guy. No, he's got. Listen, he's got the flash. He's gonna bring the eyes on him. But the best thing about Kelsey is every single time he draws everyone's attention and eyes, the guy delivers. I mean, he his production, his consistency. I mean, the guy's had a thousand yards five years in a row. You've it's, never it's, been like this dude's a pompous asshole. When you play, you can celebrate, you can dance, you can dress crazy. It's how I used to feel about Cam. People are like, what do you think about Cam's outfits? I'd be like, I thought his outfits were great. He threw for four touchdowns today. Like, if you're going to be the MVP and you're going to have 1,200 yards receiving every year, you can wear whatever you want. What about that quote he had, the one that really got me? He Like, the Chiefs lost in – he had like 9,000 yards receiving two touchdowns. He's like, I got to be better. This loss is on me. It's like, what are you talking about? You had an unbelievable <laughs> – like, it's just such a look-at-me quote. I mean, I don't know. I, I, 
I don't know. I, I've, I've known Travis for well before he was like the guy he is now. I've known him for six, seven years. And um, I've always just enjoyed him, his energy. He brings a lot of shit to the table. But anyway, in regards to TEU, what happened was Kittle, me and Kittle had the same marketing guy. So he, I've gotten to know him a little bit. He texted me when I retired and was hit him. He lives in Nashville and like five or six other NFL tight ends, a bunch of the Iowa guys, and then a few other scattered NFL guys around the league live in Nashville and they all train together. He has like this sick farm with a barn and a weight room on it. It's yeah. awesome. So they all train there in the offices. So he's like, Hey, if you ever want to come down, we work with a bunch of the guys. I'm sure they'd love you know you to come down. We can hang for a few days and work out. So from that conversation, all of a sudden we had like five tight ends, 10 guys, and the numbers started creeping up. So we start, we started talking to our marketing guy about whether there was like an event, you know, the O-line has done something like this for a while. Von Miller does like a pass rush summit. So we're like, I wonder if we can get the top tight end guys around the league, get them all together and get 20, 25 guys. We'll go down to Nashville. Well, from that conversation, we brought Kelsey in. He was all in. So the three of us kind of just started sending messages to guys around the league. And we had to cut it at 50 guys. And we had 50 top tier guys come to Nashville for three days. And we did field work. We did video classroom stuff, presentations, um, we went out to the bars in Nashville one night. It was just an awesome three-day event that we'll definitely do again. Would you say Kelsey's number one best tight end in the league right now? Right now, yeah. Who would be your two? I think him and Kittle. I would say him and Kittle, based on what they need to do within their offense. Like, I think if you switched them, I think it would be a little different. But I think they're like exactly – Kelsey's a pass-catching, dynamic, freestyle runaround. Mahomes is a freestyle runaround – Yep. He could run the route the wrong way and just throw the ball side, right? Kittle's going to go in. He's going to block. He's going to block. They're going to run. They're going to run. And then all of a sudden, he's going to run 75 yards past you for, right on a play. Like, they're perfect players at their position. The guy I came away with who I thought was good, who I was just blown away by, was Darren Waller. That dude, he's sick. That dude is un, like he is – I've seen a lot of good athletes. DK Metcalf is a guy that you walk yep. away from seeing him and you're like, holy shit. Darren Waller is that guy for the tight end. Like the way he looks, the way he runs, he looks like he's eight feet tall, but he can run. And he's as he's pro he was probably the most physically impressive guy that we had there. How's my guy come at? He I'll tell you. So I, I interviewed Komet for the TE for the TE one pod last year. So I, met him through that and um you know i didn't realize how fucking big that dude is yeah he's six seven all of it and mm -hmm. he's got to weigh 270 pounds but he run he runs pretty good you know it's just a matter of they gonna work is the tight end gonna have you know i think the him him and jimmy dynamic is hard i think last year towards the end of the year he started taking some of jimmy's stuff but then in the red zone jimmy would get the touchdown so it was like a little it was a little weird mm -hmm. like if they commit to him, I think he could be – I think he has a chance to be a pretty good player. I just didn't realize how freaking big he was. Yeah. If you were a betting man, who would you bet on to win the Super Bowl this year? Or who do you, who do you I guess, Super Bowl final, Super Bowl champ? So no no odds, just straight yeah. up pick yep. the team? Yep, I guess I mean, give us a long shot if you want to go odds, a dark horse. No, but, no. I mean, if, yeah. if there's no odds on the yeah. table and everything's just even money, I think you have to pick the Chiefs, Chiefs. right? I mean, I think you – I, if you had to pick the, yeah, I would probably pick the Chiefs. Who do you think is going to come out of the NFC? You know, everyone thinks Brady and them. I, I don't, I don't think so. And I'll tell you why in a second. In the NFC, you know, I always thought the the Saints were awesome. I think they're going to have an issue now with what they're going to do at quarterback. Why? I, the, see, I I think they were better without him. I think he was he was. No, the la yeah, I mean last yeah last yeah, he year couldn't for throw. Sure, I think. like he, yeah, he, la last year for sure. Yeah, but I'm like in their in their run the last five six years of yeah you know twelve wins thirteen years their defense is just so nasty. Yep, and that's the biggest difference. Um, you know I think it, it, again it's always hard to pick against Brady. I just think it's really hard. I think their formula when when I look back to the year we lost the Super Bowl, so a little different. Like we we tried to bring every single person back. Like we tried to just say we're just going to recreate exactly what we did last year and it blew up in our face maybe brady and arians executed better obviously brady has a lot more experience than we did coming off super bowl wins um i just always think it's kind of good to bring in fresh blood like guys who didn't 
taste it last year and bring in that sense of like, I want what you had. Like I I'm hungry for it. Yep. I know Brady can win a hundred Super Bowls and come back the next year. Like they want four and 12, but like not everyone has that mentality, you know? And like, that's my only concern is like, do they have enough dudes coming off this Super Bowl high that are willing to dive right back in since they just kind of accomplished the biggest goal? I don't know that. I don't know a lot of the guys on the team. I'm just saying from a general perspective, that would be my big concern. How do you, how do you, and I don't know even there's a way to explain it, but how do you explain Brady? Like the, you know, what he did basically going obviously from New England to Tampa yeah. Bay and then they win with Tampa Bay. He's a hundred, he's my age. He's 44. Like. It, I think it's some, I think it's one of the more, most remarkable professional sports stories of, 20, the last 25, 30 years. Like, I, you almost can't make it up, right? He didn't go join the team that the year before lost in the NFC Championship. Right. He went to a team that for the last, you know, since Gruden hasn't really done anything, right? right? They weren't, they had some good young pieces. Now, he's no dummy. He went to a team that had some young studs, especially on defense, had obviously had wide receivers. So he wasn't stupid, but they didn't have any sort of winning culture tree consistently. And for him to go there during COVID, no OTAs, no mini camp, training camp was a joke. Everyone was in and out. It was a half-assed training camp compared to what it had been like traditionally. Start out the year and kind of have their ups and downs. They got embarrassed. You know, they lost to the fucking Bears. Right. He, he's not knowing what down it was. Everyone's making fun of him. And he's almost like, all right, all right, here we go. You motherfuckers want to question me. Like, and – the guys, I, I mean, did that I change your perception story. of him? Like he already had what seven Super Bowls, say whatever. No. But did it did, see? I think no. it. I think in a weird I, form, I a lot of people thought he did. was an absolute one of a kind. Yeah. So you're not one of those people which you still hear occasionally. They'll be like Peyton Manning and Brady, like same breath. I don't put them in the same breath, like at all. No. And I, Brady. I mean, yeah. I don't think. I don't know how anyone could compare anyone to Brady. And that, again, that's not to say. I mean, Peyton Manning's Peyton Manning, but. What Brady has done, he's done like what the the guy Michael Jordan's of the world do in basketball, which right. is like a sport that's set up for one guy to be able to just carry you, right? And then a new guy comes in, carries the team that the Nets were never good. Now all of a sudden Kevin Durant has a chance to like make them good. That's not football. Like that it's just not how football's ever been. But apparently Brady I think his big impact was stuff he did that none of us ever saw. Like the off, like, the, he, like the, the teammate uh, stuff, yeah, the team building, absolutely. all that shit. Like, I think the accountability, holding guys, jumping their shit in practice, making guys do the right stuff in meetings, extra meetings, being all the little shit that these guys couldn't ever say. Like you know, shut, like get off my back, get off, right. you know, shut up. It's Tom Brady. If he tells me we're going to practice for eight hours today, we're going to practice for eight hours. Like I just think when he comes into an organization aside from just throwing the ball around the field, all his value of why you pay him is all the other shit. Right. The guys he brings along with him, because those are the guys who really won it last year. He just was like the pod piper putting everybody in place, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, good to have you. We'll have regular segments, but I am going to keep track of your calls. I'm going to keep you okay. honest. I don't want to see Bland Greg out there just being like, all right, it's, you know. You can't be in third and long because then they're going to bring pressure. Like, I don't want to hear that from you. <laughs> so you don't want me to say, like, we got to establish the run? Yes. No, I don't want you that. Know, yep. stay, out of, st stay in third and manageable. <laughs> yeah. Stay, stay ahead of the chains. Yep. The oh. team who worked the hardest in practice. Yep. Wednesday, they went full pads. They are going to come out. You know, okay, got it. Yep. Got I, it. Want, I want real <laughs> insight. I want to learn about football. All right. Well, hopefully right. I'm your guy. All right. I, I just hope you drive all your following to watch uh, our Fox broadcast. That would I be will. Ideal. I'll, I'll, I will. I will. You know what? I'm gonna try to pay attention. Have like even on our app, we'll have like prop bets on things you say. I don't know if that's <laughs> even legal. <laughs> like I don't know if we can do that, but like try to create special. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Props. All I right. get like alerts on my phone during the broadcast. I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Kurt's like, what's the matter? <laughs> oh, I said oh, yeah, special. Also... I said special again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be remiss not to say, Greg, do you remember me from the kickball tournament? Of course I do. All right. I was just – that's how I got I, in. So Are you kind still of, doing that? No. We beat they, you they, and then you retired? Okay. You didn't beat us, first of all. We absolutely annihilated you. You were wearing Blackhawks 
Yeah, I lost the bet. I lost the bet. You, but you, you did lose. I remember someone that you like. You, we lost. No, yeah. no, we lost, but it wasn't to you. Yeah, right. Well, we lost to like a professional kickball team that came in from like some other state. And these guys and girls were insane. They were a bunch of like ex soccer players. They were kicking the ball to the moon. Tough when you lose your own tournament. I, I, Dan and I got like put in a penalty box in that tournament. I like for real. Like we got a little scuff to do. Anyways, I, I appreciate it. We'll be in touch, but always uh, thanks yeah, we'll for talk coming to you on. Soon. Yeah, appreciate sure it, guys. Enough. Thanks. Good talk chat. to you later. Greg. Thanks, Greg. See it. Uh, all right, that was Greg Olson. Always great. Yeah, I love talking to him. He knows so much about football, too. But, I mean, you can talk about anything with him, really. That's what the pod would have been. And maybe one day we'll do it. Like, we're, I'm super comfortable with him. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's, he's great. He really is. Let's do, uh, let's do Slick for a second here, Dave. Slick, Spirited Ice. I got a freezer full of these in my house in the Hamptons, uh, and they're great. People love them. It is basically a little bit of uh, booze in there, so it's a brand-new, yes, alcohol-infused freezer pop crafted with elevated flavors to inspire good times, available in different premium spirit offerings, rum, agave, 8% ABV at 100 calories or less. Each naturally flavored slick spirited ice pop tastes good, if not better than any daiquiri or margarita you would be drinking. Pops are convenient enough to throw in the cooler, bring along to a backyard barbecue or pool party. When it's hot, you can put it on your forehead, then eat it, and bang, get, get the best of both worlds. So, again, um, slickspiritedice.com. This ad has been brought to you by 21 Holdings, LLC in West Chicago, Illinois. Must be 21 and up to purchase and consume. Please drink responsibly. Dave, do you have a favorite flavor? Yeah, I like the the uh, strawberry one, this guy right here. The strawberry margarita? Yep. Yes, that's my favorite too, oddly enough. So. Basically, I'm a simpleton. I almost for everything like red. Like if it went like out, popsicles, slick, you name it. I, I generally I thought like you'd be red. an orange guy. No, no, I'm not orange. Red starburst, although I like pink more, but pink's a shade of red. Yeah, the strawberry margarita is awesome. That's yep. my favorite too. So go get uh, slick and uh, finish out the summer. We still got a couple weeks here of August, so go grab some slick. Um, all right, Alex Bennett's coming on, yeah. but I think it's gonna. Is she here? Or we, do we? Can we do some yes. stuff before that? Do we know? Uh, we could finish the Dave's stuff if you want. Okay, cool. Right. Um, I guess the l last couple things here. So. There was a lot of you. You were still going full court press on the Empire State Building all week. That'll ne yeah no, they're my enemy now. They're, they're going to poach our employees. The seventh tallest building. What a joke that building is. I know Have you're you like you want Tyler. Tyler, Ty what? Have you seen him in person yet? Yeah, I saw him. I didn't say a word to him. I just glared at him. You asked if I wow. wanted him on the show. Why do I want to give him any publicity? He's out. He'll be back oh. though. You think so? Yeah. He's one of those, these idiots who's never been in the wor real world. You think going work for a building is better than here? Newsflash, it ain't. So no, there's not going to be a, a finale song for him here. We we, we never heard want it. him on the show. We, we heard it. He sang it already. Wow. I I, I know it's going to be so abrupt. He still has two more weeks, I believe. I, I, are we going to release listen, the clown? No. Next man up. Do your job. Are gonna re are we gonna release the clown nose shirts or no? I wore one yesterday. We may. <laughs> um, and are you? How long is the Statue of Liberty picture gonna stay in the Avatar? Undecided, but that's a building. That's like a statue. Like that. If you say yeah, you're gonna work statue, for the Statue of Liberty, all right. Now it's like Ellis Island. They're sending that like along as freedom. That has some history to it. That's like. You know, that's something. Even when I see the Statue of Liberty, when you fly by it or you take the boat, you're like, holy shit. That's something. That means something. All these immigrants coming, it's the first thing they see. Like that, Lady Liberty is something. That's, 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 a, that's a statue. Empire State Building? <laughs> Get out of here. That, that's, that's a joke. Nobody disagrees. Nobody thinks those two are even remotely on the same level, right? You can't. You can't. You can't. I mean, it's like one's a statue, one's a building, first of all. Second of all, like, there's a lot more meaning. To, I mean, the, a lot of, there's a lot of buildings at this point. What, the only meaning at any point to the Empire State Building was it's tall. It's the seventh tallest building in the city, I think, now, right? 
It's just an office building now. Yeah, it's just people go to work. It's cement. It's slab. Yeah, but I think at the time it signified a very tall building when tall buildings weren't really a thing, Who right? Who cares? And, I mean, we've gone back. Clem's been all over this from the beginning. It's a piece of shit pussy building. <laughs> no spine. <laughs> All right, I don't know. It, guys, have you heard anything? Did he get any backlash for last week's episode? No, they, they contacted him, but nothing. They What'd were they supportive. Say? No, they just... They're like, oh, you thanks for all the free publicity. Well, he checked in with them when he got off the air, just be like, hey, there's going to be probably a lot of talk about the what, building, what? and they're like happy the with it. Like the building I guess has the, feelings. The, the CEO of the building is loves it, loves it, just loves it. Of course he does. No one's ever talked about this building uh, yeah, before. I, I guess they went up like 40,000, 50,000 followers Of last course week. they <laughs> did. You think anyone's talked about a fucking building before? No one gives a fuck about a building. People think it's an inside job. They're like, oh, Dave must have bought the Empire State Building. He's trying to make it cool. No. Of course they oh, loved man. it. Well, who talks about a building? No one gives a shit about that place. <laughs> Unbelievable. The Empire State Building. is <laughs> One of the new, the new rivalries going into fall. <laughs> um, I saw that the Pima County supervisors pulled funding from the Arizona Bowl. Yep, saw that. I really haven't commented on it because I don't want to make the situation any worse. Or not worse, but bring attention to it. I, I have no idea who these people are, and my guess is they have no idea who we are. I am that they did zero research. So it's their prerogative. They can spend the money how they want. Yeah, based on the article I read, they were in it for like forty grand or something, and the board voted like 4-1 to one or 5-1 to one four to, to pull one, funding. 4-1, I think it was, on. yeah. And again, yeah. I, it... it Listen, I would very much, I would, I would wager that forty grand. The people who voted don't know the first thing about us. Is there is their prerogative? And to the credit of the Arizona Bowl, the committee's behind us, and they're like, we knew we'd have some people who maybe didn't do the research, uh, or, you know. And I saw he he wrote letters like, you know what? If you're not going to support this, you should never support a, a bowl game on ESPN, NBC. Like, again, I just. It's sad that the people just don't do research. That's all. Pretty measured response response there from you. Yeah, because um, it, if somebody bets on us or sticks their neck out for us, I definitely appreciate that and will do whatever I can to make them, when they look back, be like, we're glad we did that relationship. So not going to make this any more difficult than it has to be. I'm working – I, I love the Arizona Bowl and the people who did this deal with us went out of their way knowing there would be backlash, but they did the research. They believe in us, and I, again, will do everything in my power to make sure that they know this was the right decision for everybody involved. Yeah, that's, I'm sure they're happy to hear that. Then, so Anybody who's uh -huh. ever worked with me knows that's the case. Yeah, but maybe maybe a past Dave maybe would have had a more trouble biting his tongue. No, not in this situation. Not not the way this deal came out. They again stuck their necks out for us. And then I mean the with the MLB backlash, I saw the Onion wrote a column with the headline that says MLB hoping Barstool Sports partnership will restore baseball stature as nationalist pastime. I thought it was funny. I, I like the Onion. I think they're very talented. <laughs> We'd probably have a bunch of Onion writers if they ever put who wrote the articles, but they don't because they don't want the writers get pouch, poached, so you never know who's writing anything. Yeah, I think it's also a submission thing, if I'm not mistaken. Could they be. do take, like, yeah. Could be. I looked but, at trying to buy them at one point. Well, they were a Gawker media type deal, right? I don't think they were ever Gawker. No, Onion's been around forever. I could have swore they were with that. I, I, don't, I, I don't could be no, wrong. No, wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. Um, I think you're wrong. They predate Gawker. Yeah, but I think they fell under that umbrella I don't when it, think like so. everything was getting bought out, I and it was like so. that was one of the. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, all right, is Alex is Alex Bennett here? Are we ready? She's to coming go? in right now. Cool. Yeah, the MLB again. People just freaking out. They don't even know what they're freaking out about. It's what we said on the last one we had the day port. It's like, would you freak out if it's on at Fox, NBC? Like, no. Okay. Alex is in. Was this second week? Was she in last week's show? Yes, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we recorded it the week before. But yes. Oh, she's in studio. I didn't realize. Yeah, she's in studio. <laughs> okay. Oh, what's up? She Alan? just slid in. Hi. So we have to, uh, and I asked if we could, and I, this may be a little uncomfortable, but we have to address this because I started getting emails and texts like, congratulations, Dave, you, you hired the girl who stole the the Oklahoma Thunder, the stole the Supersonics from Seattle and brought them to Oklahoma. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are they talking about? So I did the research, and it's true. It's true. <laughs> I First of all, I think um, definitely – and I, am I forgetting someone? I'm at least, well, Francis is gone. I'm the second richest person now. At this oh her, her family owns the Thunder. <laughs> she That's has remarkable. all this Thunder gear. It's like, oh, she's a big Thunder fan. They, she, she stole Eddie from the Supersonic. She, she, and, like, they don't like, can you ever go to Seattle? Yes. But they don't know who you are. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so it, it's your father-in-law. Right. Who stole? Bought. Bought. So, so the so the story is as I I didn't know much about this situation, but they bought the team, and there seems to be a back and forth with the ownership group, being like we'll make an effort to keep the team in Seattle, but maybe never. You you are you are an Oklahoma person, right? So it's always like we're gonna get a team and bring it home. Well, we always wanted a team. Right. I mean, we had the Hornets when Katrina was there because we've always wanted an, an NBA team in Oklahoma. We knew what it would do for the city. I knew that long before I knew my husband because I was an Oklahoma native. Right. And then, yeah, the transaction happened with Seattle, and so, then they came to Oklahoma. What was it? Do you know that was it? Have you asked? you like, wink, wink. Were you like, yo, we're going to keep this in Seattle, but knowing it's like, yoink, we're going to go right to Oklahoma? No, I don't, I don't really even remember that part. Like – I just remember we were excited because we had an NBA team now. I don't remember really anything with Seattle except Seattle. Like, if I wear a Thunder jersey, regardless of who I am, and I see a Seattle person, they're not happy to see me. And they'll probably be even way unhappier if they actually knew who you were. <laughs> Perhaps. One I think, could think. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, we don't like you. The Thunder stole our team. Little they know it's like, your father-in-law literally stole the team. Bought. Yeah, he bought it <laughs> and then took it. Eddie is crazy, right? No, I know. It's like I just picture like people in deadlift shrimp jerseys like coming up to you and flicking you <laughs> off. Like, saying, Fuck you. Yeah. They do it anyways. Like just if you're a Thunder right. fan in general, they're not like that excited about it. No, of course. Now they're even more unexcited though if they're like, well, you know. There's a little more oomph because you actually did. Did you tell your husband you were going to talk about it? Because I asked. I didn't know if it was like. No, I, I didn't. I wasn't like sure. I didn't know. No, I just kind of was like. Eh. Were you like eventually going to figure out like that we own it? So like when when the Thunder come to Mass in Square Garden, you're just going to be on the sitting on the floor seats like watching the game. It's kind of like, oh, there's there's our employee with like sitting next to Spike Lee. I mean, I'm going to go to the game. I'm sure you are. It's your team. <laughs> it's not my team, but well, I am. Well, kind of is. I'm, I am going to go to all a lot of the games. I'm also just a huge – I interned for the Thunder long before I dated my husband. I've always been a basketball fan. So – How many games do you – well, I mean, that so that kind of has to suck a little bit then if you're such a big fan. Now you live here, so you're – I mean, you're not going to be able to go to that many games. No, but I'll go to a lot of – any game. It doesn't have to be the Thunder. Any game at the arena. You will. A most of a lot of them, yeah. And how, like, what's the ticket process? What if I want tickets now for a game? Are you my connect? No, that seems backwards. Why? I don't know. I just feel like I don't own a team. <laughs> I know, but do you want me to get you tickets? Like, would you want that? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Like, who else? No, you wouldn't. Why? Because you want to be the like. You wouldn't want an employee to do that for you that's how i feel i don't feel like you want like okay if i'm going to the games night and i have four tickets do you want me to be like do you want to go are you i don't say go yes to, to games that? unless the celtics are playing so <laughs> okay no no but it, it's like hey i want to sit next to spike lee like how do we do that i once did it i bought the tickets they're crazy expensive Madison square garden tickets especially because the knicks are starting to get like okay right are insanely expensive mm-hmm yeah, you, they're like ten grand a pop for like floor seats almost. It's very they're very expensive. Yes. I was looking at them. Yeah, they are. 
Why were you looking? Because well, it's like a I celebrity like thing. You know, they just like totally. you know they, they like to take videos of the celebs that are there. And, and by the way, even when they weren't good, they weren't great celebs. But as they started getting better, it's it. I mean, New York was buzzing when the Knicks. I mean, they made the playoffs and made the playoffs in forever. It's a social mm-hmm. event to go to an NBA game. More yes. so than any, like more than a football game because you're sitting closer. I, I agree with that. Intimate. And if there is, it's L.A. and and the Knicks, right? The Lakers and the Knicks. Those Absolutely. are two. I don't know, like Oklahoma. Do you have celebrities there? Like who goes? Who sits courtside? Um, not like, no. And if a, if a celebrity does go, they put you on camera. We get like not even Carrie Underwood. She doesn't come back. Who's like the biggest Oklahoma Thunder fan? Biggest Oklahoma like, Thunder yeah, every, fan. Yeah, every every like team has that person. Right, that loves two. to come. Yeah, that's like Spike Lee being the Knicks. Right, right. Jack Nicholson being the Lakers. Uh, For, Toby Keith. Okay. Maybe. Does he go to a lot of games? No. I'm trying to think of one time where we've had a celeb cam that they've put somebody on that's notable, that's, like, worth bringing and up. There, and there's nobody who consistently <laughs> is going there, like, there for, like, at least half the games. or Right. Huh. So how much does, like, a floor ticket cost in Oklahoma? I actually don't know. Okay, let's say let's say if you bought a good game, six grand. Oh, that's expensive. Yeah, I probably more than you were less. thinking, and yeah, it, it could is. be far less. But I think that's it. One time when I lived there, I think I looked it up. Got it. Can you explain one more time? So, what's the breakdown? So, your husband is the dad? Or what, what, yeah, what's they, the she owns the Thunder. That's the breakdown. <laughs> no, I'm married. <laughs> that's to... That's the ultimate dream. I'm, I to just, own a sports team. No. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, well, for for not is that your dream? I think it's every guy's dream. If every every guy. Not the old, maybe not their ultimate dream, but it could be a dream. Yeah, it could be a dream. I think I think outside of like playing a sport, owning a oh, team, yeah. and, and I even think it elevates. Like you look at the people who played sports, like the Michael Jordans or the Matt. Like their dream is like, how do I own a Rod? How do I yeah. own? Look at you, Thunder. She owns them. She uh, wears the shit everywhere. I was like, oh, man, this girl's a big Thunder fan. I am, regardless, I'm just a big Thunder fan. They stole. No, that's not true. (laughs) Bought them and took them. But was it, you've never asked the story at all? Well, no, I knew, I mean, I knew the story. I knew, it's public knowledge. Like, I also knew, yeah, they were purchased and then there's something went down there. Yeah, I think it was like, we're going to keep the team in Seattle, but never planned on it. That's what I read. I didn't know it intimately. But when I start being like, People from Seattle be like, you hired who stole our basketball team. I'm like, yeah, I know a lot, a lot of Seattle felt misled that there was like, wait, what a second. You keep saying that they're staying, but you're selling it to an Oklahoma City guy. Like they had a team. They're going to take it. We're telling you it's going to happen. And like, no, trust us. It's not going to happen. Then it happened. And I could see her other point. Not her, oh, she's an Oklahoma girl. They're like, fuck you, Seattle. We're going to take your team. Yeah, and correct. nothing you can do about it. No, I think if you read a little further, there's probably something in there about maybe them also ending up releasing them though and i think there was a lack of listen i have no i'm cool with seattle they can hate us like why would i hate them right, right. i don't i don't hate team. them well right. no but <laughs> i think that they maybe weren't a, there wasn't a lot of attendance there or something Ooh. their arena sucked key arena was very bad and run down from what from what i've read it was something like that it's like weird it wasn't because seattle just a steal. generally is like a great sports town like they support mm-hmm. soccer, they support their baseball. Uh, Seahawks, obviously, they're insane. Insane. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't gotten another. Like it is strange that. They got hockey yeah, that, yeah, they got hockey coming. That once Alex stole the SuperSonics, they never got a team back. Wait, so what does your husband do now? Like, what, so did he move to New York with you, or is he staying there? Or what's the deal there? Yeah, no, he he's here in New York with me. Everyone always Are asks. Are you watching him. her stories? Come on, Eddie. <laughs> Yeah, he's like terrible. I actually, I, I was telling her her, sto- her Instagram stories are very, I think, good. I still, I'm very convinced there's something there. Um, but you got to watch the stories. We got to figure that part out. Also, you know what you are? What? A huge Silvana and Dave stand. I mean, there, I there are few people I love less than Silvana. Yeah, it's like we when we figure it out, it's like there's back. Like she, you're you're very pro. I've been messaging her from like day one since yeah. you posted the first photo with her. I like went on a deep dive. Read every. I love her. Yeah, she has been disappointed. She, she's smart. Like she had this what? groundwork. How do I get on Dave's good side? It's like she laid the groundwork, just like they did in Seattle. <laughs> what do you think of the chicken necklaces? I love the I love the chicken necklaces. I I absolutely love them, and I just think that she's 
She well, obviously she's beautiful, but she's cool too. Like I feel like she can keep up with you. She posts some banter. She really doesn't care. Like she's just right in it. Everything she does, I'm like perfect. And I'm not just saying that because I'm sitting here. I was messaging her. No, that's I, what I'm saying. We saw yeah. it beforehand. We saw it beforehand. When's your mom come back? Mm, next week. Next week. Yeah, we're going on a bachelorette party this weekend together. Where? Tulum. Who's bachelorette party? My best friend, like, since I was born, and she invited my mom and her mom. That's cool. Tulum, I've never been. It's fun. Does her husband own a sports team, too? No. no. <laughs> Jackpot. <laughs> I, a, lot, a, a lot of people thought that they had the tinfoil hats on. They thought it was a power play by Dave to get, like, gambling in Oklahoma. Did you guys see that or no? I saw that. A lot of people were messaging me, too, and they were like, when are you going to start covering the Thunder? Like, this is why I hired you. And I was like, I don't think he knows. No, I had no idea. <laughs> I, I just started getting, like, emails being like, you stole the Supersonics. I'm like, what What are they talking about? And then I, I read one article, and that's, it was the day before I came and said something to you. It's like, you own the Thunder? What the fuck? No, I'm just related to them. But well, it's a little more than related. It's your husband. His dad. So if you have, do you have no kids? No kids. If you have a son, that most likely will be his team at some point. You own the Thunder. And I want courtside Celtics. <laughs> Nick, like I assume there's a fraternity within ownership groups where if someone picks up the phone and it's like, hey, I need tickets. You get the tickets. I assume that's how it works. There is kind of a fraternity thing there, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't think you want tickets from me. I don't understand that. What, are they going to be nosebleeds? No, I just don't think you want to, like, accept that. I do. I'm saying it publicly. Why? Why wouldn't I, Eddie? Why? Because like, you you're, you're not the most powerful employee there, Dave. You're, then you're, you know, that, I think there's something like that she's trying to say, maybe. No, I don't care. I'm, I'm a re realist. If you own the... It, like a sports I team, I get very impressed by that. I don't know if impress is the right word, but I get it. Like, how many NBA teams are there? 28, 30? 31, 30? There's not a lot. There's not a lot of sport not. franchises. It's like when you have one, that's, that's gold. I, I, I'm surprised you guys think I would be like, no, I don't. Eh, no, I don't want that. Of course I want that. I don't have one, though. I, I, yeah, I mean, we can. What do you mean you don't have one? I don't get that. I, I'm married to the sun. That counts. But you're the heir, right? You're the heir to the that, you're the heir counts. to the thunder. I don't know how that part works. No, that counts. I know okay, how that okay. works. <laughs> I know how that works. I, I don't, but I'm glad you do. Congratulations, you own a sports team. That's... Is he the eldest? No, he's the youngest. Oh, well, then oh. they might not be his team. Damn. Yeah. Two sisters and a boy. He's the like. There's two girls and one boy. He's the youngest. Does he work for the Thunder? No. Everyone always asks him, like, why don't you work for Does the Thunder? Does any of them? Mm -mm. Hmm. Uh, my father-in-law, I could just refer to him as Clay, is very pro, like, do what you want. Like, make your, like, yeah, that's a cool opportunity, I guess, being the son to, like, work there. And everyone's always like, why doesn't he work for the Thunder? And it's like, okay, maybe that's cool. And I don't know if that'll happen one day. But right now, it's like, why not just do what makes you happy? Like, do what you want. Well, yeah, that's a nice thing to do when you have infinity money. No, it doesn't. I, well, I mean, that is. It's, it's a do what you Anybody can do what they want to do when you own the Thunder. So you, they, they own them during the, then the whole, like, when Durant, Westbrook, and all those, that was – then right if they've owned them since they moved from seattle yeah that was then that they was... stink now right well they're bad right now but wait for it because we have 33 draft picks over the next seven years so it'll it'll kind of be like going back to that era rebuilding. yeah but i feel like draft picks in nba are very different than like that's not like the nfl like no it's the exact same thing that you were just talking about though the time that you referenced like russell harden like they were drafted by sam presti who's still there and so we're about to do that exact same thing again. Yeah, they did have a lot of talent to do, like, nothing. We'll go to the finals. Who, but who yeah. is, who's, like, their best player right now? Probably Dort. Who? Dort, Lou Dort. Lou Dort. Big Cat loves him. Loves Dort, him. I think yeah. there's a shirt. Like, the yeah. Dort chamber. He was great yeah. in the bubble. He's awesome on I, defense. I, 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 oh, that's not great when your best player you lead with, he's great on defense, but... <laughs> also not great that you didn't know him, but I'm just saying. I, I, I don't. 33 over the next seven. We're in, we're in the rebuilding phase. It's an exciting time to be a Thunder I fan. want them to be good. Yeah, you're That's not getting good any for tickets. Us. No tickets. Even if I could get them, I wouldn't give them to you. Why? Because you don't believe in us right now while we're down. Well, you stink. But we're going to be good. I hope you are. I hope so, too. <laughs> Obviously, I think we will. Be. I don't think you should hold a grudge that I said you stink when you stink. I think that you're, you should believe in us while we're down. Okay. 
So I guess we have an Oklahoma Thunder expert. No, I'm just an employee. And as my boss, you But do you watch every game? Yeah. Then you're an expert. No one else watches every Oklahoma Thunder game. No, they don't. We do need somebody like maybe we could use a big Thunder fan here. Right. Well, I'll you. do that. I'll yes, be correct. that person. Yeah. yeah. All right. Interesting. Super interesting. It's very. Not that do you interesting. You try to like. It is very interesting. I get. I guess. Are you just being like coy? No, I'm not. Do being... you think it's very interesting, Eddie? Like if someone's. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like I, I mean, anybody's like they own that. Like that, I'm impressed. I don't know if I should be, but I'm impressed. I maybe. But impressed I, I, is not I, don't, the right I didn't word. buy him. I didn't do any of that work. Well, to be honest, like nobody except, but it, like that's not how the world works. I know, but I didn't do like I feel like you did something to get to where you are. Oh, clearly I did more than your husband, but that exactly. he's still in a so, better position. No, he's not, and it's like so. Why sit here and be like that's cool what I did? I didn't do anything. I, I'm not saying what you did is cool that. Like, I, I would say, hey, if my dad could own the Celtics, and or I could have starred Barcelona, I'll, yeah, I'll take the Celtics, please. Really? Oh, yeah. You would you would do that, and you're yes. serious? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Because that's it, they're different leagues. Yeah, I don't agree, but okay. I, I feel like that you can look, you can say, like, you did something to get to where you are. Like, you did that. Well, yeah, and I, yeah, I don't know what any of, of like, your husband are, but yeah, that. Right, but it, I still want to own a sports team. Okay, but would you? And you can still. You'll always have the perception of if you're the son of somebody who's super wealthy or successful or or daughter. Doesn't matter what you do. You're always gonna have the perception that's like it was given to you because that's just there's no way to avoid it. But you can still be very good and earn and do everything, you know, and be successful. You, that's just perception. Right. Do right by that opportunity. Correct. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and and you'll always have that perception, and, and that just comes with the territory. Right. But give me the Celtics. What is this lighting we have right yeah, here? Yeah, I mean, eat chicken tenders in a sweet or clean shit out of a news rack. It's a no-brainer, right? Eddie, wouldn't you, like, if you said Michael Portnoy could own the Celtics versus that, wouldn't you just trade? Be like, yeah, I'll take the Celtics. Like, that's awesome yeah, I, own a team. I think, you ha I think for sure. And then you run it. Pff, fun. <laughs> well, that's the problem. You can't fuck it up because the people who fuck it up is, you know. Well, then you get hated. That yeah, people yes. care about that big time because when it comes to sports, yes, I mean you know you all know, obviously know how it is. Well, if I, I my first team, I would want to buy a football team. That would be like an NFL team. If you said I, I would take anything, I don't really want hockey, but I take it. But it would be first uh, NFL, then MLB, then NBA would be my preference. But if I got an NFL, I'd be the offensive coordinator. I'd call the plays. You know, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Deal with it. It's my team, my toy. That's what I'm doing. Wait, your fir the first thing you want to buy is, is what, NFL? I would go NFL first. NFL first. Correct. And then MLB? Yeah. And then NBA? Correct. Okay. Is there, like, a large gap in between those? Or no, you don't care? There, is, there is significant with the NFL. Okay. That would be one. I maybe even switch NBA because, like you said, it's kind of the social aspect is more fun. But I do like baseball more. I, yeah, maybe it, they're close. But NFL clear far and away. Okay. What about you, Eddie? Yeah, I mean, NFL for sure. There, and it's it's like, you know, it, it's one day. Like, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a lot easier to kind of manage. It's a good something point. about baseball, though, man. Like, something about going like a nice day game or whatever and having your spot. But, M yeah, probably baseball two, NBA three. Yeah, so same, same order. order. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good. I mean, I can't believe it. Like, to me, that is a shocking development. I can't believe it took Although we did have found out so fast. Robert Kraft's granddaughter was an intern here really oh really yeah she was that's pretty cool she's not still here no you said was she's still in college right yeah so maybe she one day comes back who knows then we have two owners maybe that's how i'll just start cornering the market on teams who work here <laughs> can you get us nba rights no i no i don't even know i mean I do, you answer do no quick yeah i just wasn't <laughs> i just assume most of the time okay wouldn't you rather under promise over deliver like, I'm just going to say no to everything. I don't think she can get NBA tickets. But Smart. I do think I she like can that. get us tickets to games. I do think that. Maybe one like day we just else. all fly to Oklahoma and sit all, all Barstool courtside, a Barstool courtside game at Oklahoma. My husband did say he would love that. That would be awesome. That would be sick. That would be, be sweet. Sick. We can pair that with an OU football game and have, like, a Friday night. Are you a big OU football fan? Very large OU football fan. Saturday day. I, I would day. I would love to go to an OU football game. Really? Yeah, I feel like that would be a great experience. I, I think going 
to colleges like that. It could be Oklahoma. It could be Nebraska. It could be, you know, Alabama, whatever. Those are the best, like, experiences. It, going to an OU football game is a fabulous experience. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I would like that. How far is OU Norman from – Oklahoma City. 25 minutes. Oh, wow. It's so easy. Yeah, the logistics of it all are very fun. I think we may have to take a road trip. I assume that we just take the Thunder plane or something that fit all the people and go <laughs> and just sit around. I'm, I'm in. That'd be sick. Field trip. It would be awesome. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> all right. See, we're making moves. Cool. There we go. And people of Seattle, now you have a face to, like, put to your hatred. I don't think you guys have, like, a – do you have, like, a big Seattle base? I – no, I don't think so. No, I doubt it. Yeah. Is there anything you want it's to say good. to the people of Seattle? Love you. <laughs> Wish you loved me back. How long ago was that? Like 20, 30 years? No. Tw- no. Bro. 2014. What? what, the move? Yeah. 2014, I think. Are you kidding me, dude? Yeah, what? Kid? Durant played for the Seven Sonics. years? Yeah. Durant played yeah. for the Super Zone? Yes. One yeah. year. One yeah. year. Us oh, for nine shit. years. I thought it was way older. It's either 2013 or 2014. I thought it was way older, so this is fresh. Okay. It's pretty. It's yeah. It's kind of recent. Drain was there one year, years. and then in OKC for eight years. Oh, I didn't know that. I I did not know that. Yeah, and yeah. Do you hate Durant now? Mm-mm. No, he put us on the map. I like Durant. A lot of people from Oklahoma City don't like Durant, but he took us on our took us to the champ to the finals, and then or gave us the championship run, and then he was the MVP while he was there, and he completely put the Thunder on the map. So I love him. And then he left. Like that's fine. I would I wouldn't like him I don't think because I see so you guys offered a max whatever and he's I mean this is what he does he just goes but yeah oh and like that's that's a Kevin thing like that's a, that's a deal for him you know right. but like as far as a Thunder fan no we were nothing and then we were a lot because of him is Oklahoma City fun it's so fun it used to not be fun but now it's very fun and it's like a big sports town it's young there's great food really good barbecue it's a blast. I may be biased. Ro- road trip. It was oh, 08, 09. I'm an idiot. I'm just as dumb as Dave. It was 08, 09. That's so, so it wasn't 20. No, it was, that's only 12 years, though. 12, okay. 13. So, right. But I think I was closer. Yeah, you, yeah it it's not old. been 30 years. Yeah, no. I said 20, didn't I? I think you said 20 to 30. 30. 30. Greg Olson 30. should be keeping tally of that, the dumb shit you say. Because Durant got drafted in, what, 07? So it would have been 08. One. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. 08, 09 was their first season there. All right. Well, that was – it's interesting. That's fascinating to me. But And, and again, we got to figure out – follow. If you're not following Alex on her Instagram, her stories are where you get the best look into everything. And Seattle people, you can see what you're missing. No, do not come at me, <laughs> Seattle people. Well, you already do, so it's fine. They probably don't come after you. No, kind of. I mean, not necessarily. Yeah. No. Maybe now. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. You're off your – Tulum now. Oklahoma then Tulum. A weird stopover. Super Have fun. Weird. Thank you. I'm impressed by it, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, that's I, just something like, what? They own a sports team? Like, anytime I meet anybody who's associated with the family who owns a professional sports team, I'm impressed because I really do think – I had a meeting last night. Like, I, um, I got equity in this company, Slice, which we do advertising with, and I learned more about what they do, and they're very pro-pizza places, right? So I'm going to try to help get their message across and why, it's, why they are good for small pizza. It's the perfect fit for me. So we've worked with them, and they're like, we want you to become more involved, give you a little piece of the action and motivate all this. Um, and there was like an investment group that invested in Slice, and they're like, what's your number? Like, how much do you want to make? It's like, honestly, I'm not like a number guy. I, I, it's like if it's interesting and I like doing it, I get motivated. I've made more than I could ever dream of, and like what's a little – I like money's all tight because my house in the stock market or whatever but it's like the next jump is just the only thing i could think is like buying a sports team that's literally what i said like who cares if you have 100 million or like 150 and that's not even close you, you, you need a b to get to the sports team. Yep. and it's just even if you have it doesn't mean you can get it it there's plenty of people who want sports teams who probably have money who can't do it. You you have to get approved. There's only so many of them that can be for sale. That's yeah. You'd have a tough time regardless if yeah. you had the money. I think. Yeah. What is what is better to own than a sports team in the world? Nothing. 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 You're right. I agreed with you for sure. And also, we're we're sleeping on if she is as big of Oklahoma Sooner fan as she says. Like that's good for business as well like that something tells me she has some fairly 
good connections in Oklahoma would be my guess. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Watch so. out, Trista Crick. Route. Yeah, watch out what? Trista Crick. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, trifecta Nutrition, Dave. I, then we'll I, do some inside bar no, I, Why would I not want to get tickets from her? I, I'm totally clueless on that. I don't know, like, because you're like the guy who's like, hey, do you, you know. No, no, no. But That's I guess, because I am the guy. Not I because I like being the guy. If well, Paul, like, if, like if, if Paul uh, could take me around and buy tables and host, I'd be like, all right, do it, Paul. That's what I do so with sale you. The, <laughs> Jeremy, the sales so, But I'm not like this. I know this is – they own the fucking Thunder. What about, like, Jeremy, the sales guy? Isn't he pretty plugged in in uh, Florida? Like, would you like if he was, like, your guy? I, I would certainly ask him if I thought he could put me in a more advantageous spot than I can put myself. Okay. He still owned part of the Spurs, too, early on. Damn. Look at where this guy came from, yeah. Good for her. Chairman of Oklahoma. Georgia and she's Oklahoma. open about it. Like, I, I did, as people think I'm, like, a crazy person, but I asked him, like, can we talk about it? I don't want to, like – I there's something about her that I think just works, like, even the way she handled that. Yeah, she downplayed it big time, I think. Seattle I think people, people will maybe appreciate like, that. We may have a whole new group of people that don't like Barstool. There used to be a minority, yeah. minority share of the family of the Texas Rangers as well, above above him. Fuck yeah. His family. That, we're going to do a courtside. We're going to line courtside at Oklahoma. That <laughs> would be electric. They sold their portion to George W. Bush. I've heard of him. <laughs> Uh, trifecta Nutrition, Dave. We got. I know it's good food, Eddie, and they send it to you all prepared. 40... I had the elk and the flat iron steak the other night. It was very good. Really? Yes, very good. How long you did get it take like... to cook? Uh, I threw it in the air fryer. You know, I, yeah. I didn't want to go out and grill whenever it was raining, so I put it in the air fryer, and honestly, it was. You know, just kind of eyeballed it, and it was not long. It worked out well. Good. I've been busy, and these deals are perfect for it. Work on the Arizona Bowl. Uh, you know, and I don't have time for, like, waiting or, like, even waiting in line in New York a lot of places. Um, Why well, is Trifecta is perfect because it keeps me eating healthy, delicious meals delivered straight to my door. Organic, top-tier in ingredients to keep my mind sharp and my body shredded. I don't know about shredded. My mind's sharp. I will say I need it. Eddie, I had Chinese food. Two days ago, heartburn for 48 straight hours. I'm getting old. So trifecta, I need healthy. I can do better, think better, everything. Um, best meal prep on earth. All meal plans are created by chefs, nutritionists, help people get in the best shape of their lives. Um, trifecta makes eating healthy not suck. All trifecta's meals backed by nutrition science taste gr great. Uh, you don't have to suffer to eat healthy. So that is a very important part. Convenient, save time. You don't have to prep. Again, science-backed nutrition, fresher food, farm-to-fork supply chain, never frozen, organic. Shop meal plans and get 40% off with code Dave at trifectanutrition.com. 40% off. Huge. All right, in inside Barstool, then we'll get out of here. Uh, Field the Dreams game, did you watch the game? What did you think about White Sox Dave telling Marty Mush to eat his fat, round cock? I love uh, it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> And I saw a lot of people, this is who they're going to give the MLB rights to. It's a fan. <laughs> That's what we do. White Sox Dave being authentic. Uh, I watched it like 20 times and thought it was very, very funny. Unbelievable video. Like he just, he was so, the, the best ones are you could Fight. tell where he didn't think Fight. about it. Yeah, exactly. You get it <laughs> you and know. go. Yep. Yep. He, boom. And he just like. <sighs> Did that go crazy viral, Paul? No. Not as much as I thought it would have. Huh. I thought it would have gone crazy. Just within our world. Yeah, just within yeah. our world. I mean, that was the, the best game I've seen, like, in a long time. Very cool looking, the most, obviously. Yeah. They said it was the best ratings in 16 years for a yeah. baseball game. I mean, it was obviously the imagery was spectacular. Yeah. I, I by the way, game. am much more of a natural fan over a Field of Dreams. Natural's a good movie. Where do you think they should play a game next? They're going to start doing, like, wacky shit, I feel like. I mean, what is there though? They do the. Well, everyone said game. the Sandlot, which would be great. Sand? A what? A Sandlot game. How would they do that though? 
you get a house in left field. You put the green, you know, the green fence over there, and you have the Dodgers play the Giants. They're saying because it was, you know, Benny the Jet yeah, right, for the right. Dodgers. So, um, I mean, there's nothing right like in the natural. That's really no, I think unique. That's all stadium based. I mean, maybe Bull Durham, but the, that's a real stadium, right? Yeah. Costner mm-hmm. just hogging all the baseball movies. Yeah, right. Did you see his like intro and everything? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, cool. I like Field of Dreams, but it's it's a distant. Is it? I I have the Natural ahead of it. I have Major League ahead of it. I have Bull Durham ahead of it. But I do like it, but it's distant for me in the baseball category. You're a big Mister Three Thousand guy too, right? <laughs> I'm not a big Mister Three Thousand guy. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was great. So go do that. I'm excited. I hope. I hope the Yankees make the playoffs because I think White Sox Yankees somehow. Oh, that would be great. Would unbelievable. Great. I'd like Tampa to fall out, get the Red Sox and the Yankees in there, obviously. That'd be nice. Um, and I, there's a video out there, Redline Radio versus Starting Nine. Go check that out, too. Uh, Billy Football and Ben Mintz became roommates. I saw that. Odd couple. Barstool spawns odd, odd couples. And then I saw Mincy ran into someone at the new Barstool Sportsbook in York, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and the dude did too. Um, yeah. I, didn't, I haven't followed much, and then I know Rico was on, like, Pick Central with Mintz, who hosted it. So I don't know how that's shaken out. I haven't got the details on that yet. The dude's here today. The dude is here today. Yeah. Well, he will be in 20 minutes, I because guess. Because Rico's not in. Yeah, for Pick Central. Interesting. You gonna pop in there? Oh, he's here right now. Interesting. Uh, Frank the Tank and Mets Twitter is in disarray. Frank was right. <laughs> Hashtag Frank was right. And when is KFC and Clem going to apologize to him? Frank was right. He's been right all along. The <laughs> Mets are exactly who they thought they lose every night. The Mets lose every night. And I haven't seen Kevin or Clem apologize. One man. Was correct, and that's Frank the Tank. <laughs> I was dying at the guy who got the behind the scenes of Frank at the bus stop. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> correct. The guy, the people sitting on the park bench next to him, just like, what is going on right now? But listen, <laughs> hashtag Frank was right. It should be trending every single day. <laughs> they, I, they've <laughs> won like one game since the All Star break. Yeah, it's been it's been you know the Grom's out. Lindor's out. That that, that well, certainly doesn't help. Obviously. No, it doesn't. But Frank's been all over that. The training staff is no good. So, yes, he's he's been there. Um, Bailey Carlin's back in the mix. Part time social during the football season. Yeah. Paul hired him. I knew that was like in the cards. Yeah, he was in the mix right after we left. Basically, we signed him up for to do to help us with football efforts. Um, yeah. All right, welcome back. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. Quiggs and Pete, they argued over the pylon cam, if that's going to be a thing for the Arizona I heard Bowl. it's not a thing, correct? Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Whatever. I, 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 w- I know Quiggs loves it. I've stolen his, like, uh, Mike Allstott pylon before as punishment for him giving me NC State in a pick. Um, <laughs> I could care less about the pylon cam. I, I feel like Pete – I don't want Pete getting Scorsese on us for this game just – Keep it basic. Sometimes Pete gets in over his head. So, like, if we got to eliminate things like pylon cam, I'm fine with that. Well, what if what are you okay with? Maybe Blatman steps in, and you know, no, more because it's cutting season? and switching and shit. That I, it's like you get Blatman and James Cameron in there, get some real nice <laughs> cinematography. Yeah, I mean Blatman. Blatman's a guy who will spend a hundred grand for a camera that moves just for the beginning of the college football show, just up and down one inch. <laughs> by the time I, every year the college football budget I slash by 95% from week one to the end of the season like why do we need that why do we need that why do we need that well we need the air of the shot for one second we're in our office the set is in our <laughs> office <laughs> and then is uh is, is Tico ever leaving New York or is there an update I gotta or talk to I, her she uh... just DM me I told her to get out of my asshole last weekend because she was DMing me a thousand times like Tico get out of my asshole Pandora's box has been opened. With yeah, her. it's just, I mean, she she's, I think she could do something, but Tico, I've been doing this for 20 years. I, I don't have the time to have someone in my asshole every two seconds asking me a million questions. 
What was her response when you told her to get out of your she asshole? She laughed, kind of. She's like, I didn't know you were on vacation. I didn't mean to be in your asshole. I'm like, <laughs> you're in my asshole. But I got I to <laughs> respond to her or else she'll get right back in there. And then, <laughs> and then uh, are we going to play a dozen match, Dave? I No one's told me anything about it. I know the well, season's going on. Well, the thing is, I guess on. you just got to make it sure, like, it's not, it can't be live. And I know you kind of wanted it to be live, but I guess it's not able to be done. What do you mean? Well, that was your thing last time. You're like, I'm only doing this show if it's live, but I guess it can't be live. Why well, can't be live? Just like with the production and the graphics and whatnot and the questions. and No, that's not true. Unacceptable answer. Of course it could be live. So do you stand by that? Can we do a it, tape? Haven't one? you done it live before? I think when it first started, but that's before it became what it is now. Which is what? A lot bigger and more produced. Force behind it, I guess you'll say. It should always be live. We can do it. It's just like. So these ones that they've been taping that haven't been live. No, when, when do they of come them, out? None of them are live. There, it's not out. No, no, it is. They usually come out. I think the next day. So they record it at like that night, and then it comes out the next morning. Mm-hmm. Stupid. I'll talk to Jeff Delo. All right. Besides that, good. A uh, couple things to plug. Good behind the blog with Jeff Delo with Ke- with uh, Kevin. Check that out. Chicago Stool Scenes as well. Three episodes in every other week. And, uh, yeah, that's it, Dave. Anything else? Big meeting? Can you, can you shine some light or what's going on? No, I don't on? know that's a big meeting. We have a pen meeting, but I, we, we have those periodically. I wouldn't say it's a big meeting. Oh, okay. I don't know. For some reason, I thought it was because it's in person, right? Yeah, they do that. They come up here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anything else? No. All right. That's all there is. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week. We'll see you then.